The title of my presentation is Eosinophilic Chronic Lyme Sinusitis Mechanisms to Management. We have a revolutionary progress in the treatment of chronic Lyme Sinusitis, CRS, in the 1990s. Development of endoscopic sinus surgery, ESS, and discovery of macroid therapy, low dose, long term macroid treatment. Macroid therapy was originally discovered by Professor Kudo for the patient with diffuse panbronchiolitis, TPB. HLA-B54 is a frequent holotype, and DPB primarily affects East Asian people. Before the discovery of macroid therapy, five-year survival rate was around 50%. However, it becomes curable now after the use of macular therapy. The effect of macular therapy depends on anti-inflammatory and immunomodulatory actions of 14 and 15 membered macroids against host defense and against bacterial function. And DPP is a subtype of sinobronchial syndrome and macular therapy is effective for the accompanying CRS symptoms in DPB patient. And then it was found that macular therapy is also effective for CRS patient without DPB. And low dose, long term chrysomacin treatment is now widely used for the treatment of CRS in Japan. These are clinical features of macular therapy for CRS. It is useful to suppress mucus hypersecretion and is effective in neutrophil-associated CRS and is more effective in combination with endoscopic sinus surgery, ESS. This is guiding principles of macular therapy for the treatment of CRS in Japan, published in 2016. And macular therapy is effective for treating a patient with hypersecretory symptoms such as rhinorrhea and postnasal drip. And for treating neutrophil associated inflammation with prurent or mucopurent rhinorrhea. But it is not effective in patients with eosinophilic chronic Lyme sinusitis. Although CRS is a heterogeneous disease, these are clinical characteristics of neutrophilic and eosinophilic CRS. Eosinophilic CRS is characterized by eosinophilic infiltration, viscous and sticky rhinorrhea, bilateral, multiple, and recurrent proposis, nasal obstruction, hyposemia, sinus dominant inflammation, and aspirin intolerant asthma. And macular therapy is not effective. As you know, there are different phenotypes in inflammation in CRS with nasal prep between Europe and East Asian countries. In Europe, 19% of patients with CRS with nasal prep are uh, characterized by eosinophilic inflammation. However, in Japan, 45% of patients with CRS with nasal prep have neutrophilic inflammation, and macular therapy is effective in these cases. So the diagnosis of eosinophilic CRS is important for the treatment of CRS with nasal prep in East Asian countries. In Japan, Nobel scoring system and algorithm for classifying CRS is established in 2015 by the Japanese Epidemiological Survey of Refractory Eosinophilic CRS, JSREC study. A recurrence rate of CRS with nasal preps 
were examined after the endoscopic sinus surgery. And recurrent CRS or nasal prips was found in 23.1% of patients treated with ESS. Kaplan-Meier plot showed the higher risk of recurrence in patients with the number of infiltrating eosinophils equal or higher than 70. These are eosinophilic chronic line sinusitis. This table shows the clinical profiles of eosinophilic chronic line sinusitis. Bilateral disease, nasal polyp, higher proportion of blood eosinophils, a small dominant CT shadow, bronchial asthma and aspirin intolerance are characteristics for eosinophilic chronic line sinusitis. And GESTREC scoring system was developed for the diagnosis of eosinophilic chronic line sinusitis. Diagnostic items were bilateral disease, score three, nasal polyp, two, it's more the dominant CT shadow, two, and proportion of blood eosinophils. And total clinical score, JSREC score of 11 or higher is diagnosed as eosinophilic chronic line sinusitis. This is a diagnostic algorithm of a CRS using JSREC score. JSREC score of 11 or higher is diagnosed as eosinophilic chronic line sinusitis, and the eosinophils of peripheral blood more than 5%, a small dominant CT shadow, and comorbidity of bronchial asthma and aspirin intolerance are factors to decide the mild, moderate, and severe cases. And moderate to severe cases have higher recurrence rate of nasal polyps after the ESS. So this GESREC scoring system is useful for the diagnosis of eosinophilic chronic line sinusitis without the operation or biopsy. Next, I would like to talk about the role of innate immunity in the pathophysiology of eosinophilic chronic line sinusitis. Epithelial cell-derived cytokines, TSLP, IL-25, and IL-33, and type 2 innate lymphoid cells, IRC2s, are important to initiate and regulate TS2 cytokine-dependent innate immune responses. And we found that protein and mRNA expressions of TSLP, IL-25, and IL-33 were increased in inferior turbinate and nasal polyp from patient with eosinophilic chronic line sinusitis. And there was a positive correlation between the mRNA expression of IL-25 or TSLP and the severity of landmark CT score in patients with eosinophilic chronic line sinusitis. Allergen, house dustomite, alternaria, protease from SRS, these allergen induced releases of TSLP and IL-25 were significantly increased in cultured nasal epithelial cells from patients with eosinophilic chronic line sinusitis. 
And we also found that arrhythmia derived proteases and the protease activated the receptor part two of the epithelial cells. Uh, important in arrhythmia induced releases of PSLP and IL-25. And then we examined the role of endogenous protease inhibitors, cystatin A, cystein protease inhibitor, and SPINK5, serine protease inhibitor, in the pathophysiology of azenophilic chronic line sinusitis. And endogenous protease inhibitors, cystatin A and SPINK5, significantly decreased the allergen induced release of TSLP, IL-25, and IL-33 from cultured airway epithelicers. And when cystatin A was knocked down by siRNA, these allergen induced releases of TSLP, IL-25, and IL-33 were significantly stimulated. And when SPINK5 was knocked down by siRNA, these allergen induced releases of TSLP, IL-25, and IL-33 were also significantly stimulated. And the protein and mRNA expression of cystatin A was significantly decreased in inferior turbinate and nasal polyp from patient with eosinophilic chronic line sinusitis. And those of SPINK5 was also significantly decreased in inferior turbinate and nasal polyp from patient with eosinophilic chronic line sinusitis. And finally, we induced chronic eosinophilic inflammation in mouse nasal epithelium by the chronic exposure, 16 weeks exposure of multiple allergens, Artenaria, astastamide, and protease from S. aureus. And eosinophilic infiltration, iris 3 production, total IgE production, and VEG productions are uh, significantly increased at eight to 60, 16 weeks. And polypoid changes of nasal polyps, nasal epithelium were, was found in at 16 weeks. In cystatin A and SPINK5 expressions were first increased, but then decreased at eight to 16 weeks. And using this animal model, intranasal insertion of cystatin A and SPINK5 was examined. And intranasal insertions of cystatin A and SPINK5 significantly attenuated multiple allergens induced chronic inflammation chronic eosinophilic inflammation in mouse nasal epithelium. And these endogenous protease inhibitors attenuated the, the polypoid changes of mouse nasal epithelium at 16 weeks. We then examined the prevalence of IRC2s in nasal polyps using cell soda. And nasal polyp derived IL-C2s produce a large amount of IL-5 and IL-13 and proliferate significantly in response to IL-33 and IL-2. And the prevalence of IL-C2s in nasal polyps was significantly high in eosinophilic CRS patient compared with non eosinophilic CRS patient. And the prevalence of irc 2 was positively correlated with number of eosinophils in nasal polyps. 
In conclusion, protease activity of airborne allergens are crucial to induce the production of TSLP and IL-25. Increased epithelial cell-derived cytokines, TSLP, IL-25, and IL-33, and IL-C2s, and decreased expression of endogenous protease inhibitor, cystatin A and SPINK5, are involved in the pathophysiology of esophagic chronic rhinocytitis. These are therapeutic target for eosinophilic chronic rhinocytitis. TS2 type cytokines, epithelial cell derived cytokines, IgE, epithelial cells, RC2s, TS2 cells, and protease. And now, monoclonal antibodies against IgE, IL5, and IL4 and IL13 are clinical carry available in Japan. And uh, dupirumab, dupirumab is the only drug we can use for eosinophilic chronic rhinocytosis now. It is clinical carry effective, but is very expensive and can be used only for the treatment of intractable cases and recurrent cases after the ESS. Thank you for your kind attention.